Well, this is the cover of John Goodman's newest book. It's called Priceless, Curing the Healthcare Crisis. Book TV is on location at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas, and Dr. John Goodman joins us now for to talk about Priceless. Dr. Goodman, let's start by asking you about the recent Supreme Court decision on the health care bill. What is your view? Well, I was sorry to see that decision. Uh, I wish the court had thrown out Obamacare and that we could start over and have uh, a more rational health care reform. Uh, now we're going to have to deal with the law as it is. And um, I think, though, that even the supporters of the law are going to want to make major changes in it within the next year and a half. Well, okay, let's start. What, what do you want to see? What do you see as rational health care? Well, what we have in the Obamacare law is a requirement that you and I buy an insurance plan whose cost is going to grow at twice the rate of growth of our income. And you don't have to be an accountant to know that if you're paying for something that's increasing at twice the rate of growth of your income, it's going to crowd out everything else you're consuming, and eventually you'll have nothing to eat, nothing to wear, no place to live, but you'll have lots of health care. That is an impossible path. Um, you're group, the National Center, NCPA, is one of the uh, founders of the health savings accounts, correct? That's correct. Right. That's right. What are those? Well, a health savings account is an account that people own and control, and it allows them to manage some of their own health care dollars. And most employers find that when they go to a high deductible plan and put the premium savings in an account for their workers, that they cut the overall cost of the plan by as much as 30%. And employees are happier because they get to spend the money in the way they want to. And HSAs, how many people are using HSAs? Well, about 24 million people are uh, managing their own money in a health savings account or something similar to a health savings account. And what's the law say about HSAs? Well, the law is very restrictive. It says you have to have an across-the-board deductible, and if you don't, you can't have one. I, I don't like that. I think the law should be very flexible. And if it were flexible, most people in this country would have a health savings account. You also mentioned that with regard to health care legislation, that the supporters of the current health care bill will want to make changes. What are some of those changes that you foresee them making? Well, you've got to give people the opportunity to choose a plan that has scaled down benefits, higher deductible. If, if, if you can't control costs any other way, people have to adjust the kind of plan they're going to buy. And uh, the Obamacare legislation has very strange subsidies. The employees of this hotel who earn $10, $15 an hour are going to have to have a family plan that costs $15,000. Well, that's half their wages. But the new law gives no help to the employees or to the hotel uh, to buy that plan. On the other hand, if the hotel uh, abolishes its insurance plan and sends all these employees over to a new exchange, uh, they're going to get ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 of subsidy from the federal government. You're going to see businesses all over the country start to restructure. You're going to see workers lose their jobs. At some point, people are going to say, there's got to be a better way than this. You're speaking here at Freedom Fest. What's the topic of your, of your talk, and what's the message you want to get out? Well, I'm talking about the book. Uh, I'm going to explain the title of the book, Priceless. It's a double entendre. On the one hand, your health care is priceless. But on the other hand, we're dealing with a health care system that has no real prices. You know, none of us ever sees a real price for anything in health care. No doctor, no patient, no employee, no employer. And that's the problem. If you don't see real prices, then everybody faces perverse incentives uh, to make costs higher, quality lower, access more difficult. Uh, if we want, if we want to solve our health care pro problems, we've got to restore power to the patient and the doctor, and let price, let the price system work. Have you requested ever gone to the doctor and requested a price list? Oh, you can't find one. The only place you see real prices is in those markets where the insurance companies aren't. So if you walk into a minute clinic at a CVS pharmacy, it's all posted. <laughs> if you walk into a normal doctor's office, they don't know what the cost of anything is. So how do we get to where there's an actual price list or we know what things are costing? And how does that benefit the consumer? First, we have to empower the patient, let them control more of the dollars. Then you get an immediate response on the supply side. Then the doctors start competing on price and on quality. And you see that in cosmetic surgery. You see it in LASIK surgery. You see it with the walk-in clinics. Uh, and when you have that, then, then all of a sudden you find the real price of care is going down 
over time instead of going up. So is there a government role in, in how do you see the government in healthcare? And do you see the government? The government is the source of most of our problems in healthcare. And so one thing we ought to do is take all the ways that government subsidizes private health insurance, take all that money, give each of us the same amount of money to purchase health insurance. It would be about $2,500 for an adult, uh, $8,000 for a family. That's your tax subsidy. You can spend additional money, but that's after taxes. And uh, treat everybody the same. What do you mean? Right now, we don't. Right now you get a nice subsidy if your employer provides you with the plan. You get no tax relief if you purchase the insurance on your own. Under Obamacare, those inequities are even worse. So step one would be treat everybody the same. When you buy insurance, no matter who you are, no matter where you get it, you should get the same amount of help from government. What about insurance companies? What, what is their role in reforming the health care system in your view? Well, right now they're just big bureaucracies, <laughs> but I think they need to be liberated too, because I think we need real insurance, and you ought to be able to insure against a pre-existing condition. And you do that when you buy life insurance. You buy life insurance, then you get a prostate cancer test that turns out bad for you. You don't pay a higher premium, they don't kick you out of the plan, and health insurance should be the same way. People often compare health insurance policy to auto insurance policy. Can they be the same or similar? Well, I wish they were, because uh, with auto casualty insurance, you see the commercials on TV and they're saying, look, if something bad happens to you, we're gonna be there for you. In healthcare, we get exactly the opposite. The health insurers don't want anybody with a problem. They run from them, and then when you enroll in their plan, they really have an incentive to under-provide to you because they didn't want you in the first place, and they wish you would go someplace else. So we have given the insurance companies bad incentives to take care of us. So, John Goodman, when it comes to pre-existing conditions, does the government have a role in saying, yes, you need to insure pre-existing conditions? Yes, but you, sh you don't want to join a plan and pay a premium that's way below the cost of your care because then the insurance company isn't going to want you and it's going to treat you poorly. So what we recommend is being able to insure in advance against pre-existing conditions so that, so that if you have to pay a higher premium, you've, you've got insurance that pays that higher premium, but also we need portable insurance. We don't have that today, we don't have it under Obamacare, but you should own your own insurance and be able to take it with you from job to job. The employer system, is it time for it to, to uh, not be the system? I believe in free markets. I believe in letting employers and employees do what they choose to do. But let's have a level playing field. Right now, laws in every state make it illegal for the employer to buy for the employees insurance they can take with them to the next job. We need to abolish those laws, turn everything around, and encourage portable insurance. What's the, what's the argument in favor of having it uh, divided by states? Well, I can't think of any argument that I find uh, persuasive. Uh, you ought to be able to buy insurance across state lines. You can buy life insurance across state lines. And so this is just silliness. And uh, the only people that benefits are the special interests who packed into your health insurance plan uh, their special coverages. And uh, that's not benefiting you. It's just benefiting special interests. Priceless is the name of the book, Curing the Healthcare Crisis, a new book in 2012. And John Goodman is the author. This is Book TV on C-SPAN 2.